People today, this is 2021, people today want to, are more likely to work for a company who spends time training them, even if they already know a lot when, they, when you bring them on board. They want to know more about you. They want to know more about your company. They, they want to know about your expectations. See, people thrive with good expectations. They thrive under that. The kind of people you want thrive under that. If, if they don't thrive under the expectations of growing and, and, and communicating, then you hired wrong. Get rid of them fast because they're probably not going to work and they're going to drain you of a lot of money before you figure it out. Hey, this is Greg McAfee and welcome to the Greg McAfee Show. Now let's get started. Hi, Greg McAfee here, and welcome to the Greg McAfee Show. If you guys are not uh, subscribed to the YouTube or to the pod channel, feel free to do so. And each week when I put out this content, um, I just want you to know that I want you to succeed, I want your business to grow, and I want you to sleep better at night. So um, hit that little subscribe button right there and uh, turn on the notifications. And on every Tuesday when I put out a new episode, You'll be the first to see it. So today we're going to talk about five ways uh, for you to maintain a good company culture. Some of you know what your culture is. Some of your team members know what the culture is of your company. Some of you don't know what your com company culture is. And I always say, if you want to find out what your company culture is, ask your team. They will tell you. In other words... You, you get to create your culture. We started creating a culture in a garage. We started creating things like we're going to do what we say we're going to do when we say we're going to do it. So that that's honesty. We're going to start with honesty. We're going to start with reliability. We're going to start with p dependability. We're going to start with things like that. We started with that in the garage. Uh, we wanted to be a different kind of heating and air conditioning company even though we started with $274 in a used truck. We wanted, to be, we wanted to have a positive effect on not only our employees, but on our community. We started that in the garage. On my little desk in a little 800-square-foot ranch that we started in, actually started at the kitchen table, and uh, if you would have looked at my little desk, it was a little computer desk, and it had a little slide-out drawer where the keyboard was, this big 24-dot printer underneath. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, there was two or three little pictures on top of the desk, and they were Little League teams. So from the first year, we started sponsoring Little League teams. So our culture started with sponsoring children's events. Today, it's exploded. We, we support all kinds of children and youth events. We have our own foundation for children and youth. Um, we partner with the Salvation Army and um, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars go to the Salvation Army and other um, nonprofits such as that to help children and youth. Plus, we just do a ton of stuff here locally. Um, we have 100% participation within our company, so they all give to the foundation right out of their check, and then the company um, matches what they give and then um, we're, we're just able to help a lot of kids. But we started that from day one is what I'm saying. You have to have your own culture. Whatever it is, you have to figure it out. Um, do your, does your team enjoy working at your company? Have you asked them that lately? Is there a high turnover rate within your company? Is it is your company, um, is there a lot of gossip going on? Is there a lot of negativity going on? Do your employees feel safe in your office? Is it a safe environment? All those things have to do with culture. What are you creating? What kind of atmosphere are you creating? Are you creating a place where people want to stay and work? Is it is it good? 
Is it good pay? Is it, is it um, um, an atmosphere they can succeed in? Is it professional? Um, are there systems in place? All that kind of stuff has to do with your culture. Those are the kind of questions you have to ask yourself. And personally, if you don't know what your culture is, that's where I would begin. I would bring, I would bring a team in. If you have, let's pretend you have 10 employees, I would bring them in and actually I would take them out to eat or do coffee somewhere, not in your office. Get them somewhere in a neutral place where you're not even talking business, but you talk business. You say, tell me more about um, your company, okay? How do you guys like working here? What can I do to improve? What are, th- what are some things you hate? What are some things you love? What are some things you're hearing from other... That's a great question, by the way. When you ask, what are some things you're hearing from other employees? They might tell you what they think and not what the other employees think. But if you ask them point blank, what do you think? They, might, they may not tell you. So, um, so that's, that's a great question. First, you have to define your culture. You have to figure out what, what kind of culture you have there. Um, my, the McAfee culture, the McAfee way of doing business is going to be completely different. There's, we're going to have some things in common, but it's going to be completely different than uh, the way you do things in your office or in your business, okay? Um, wearing uniforms, crisp, clean, T-shirt underneath, can't be a loose neck T-shirt. It's got to be a certain color. You got to wear a belt. You got to wear uh, work boots. You got to wear shoe protectors in homes. You've, you've got to wear a McAfee hat if you're going to wear a ball cap. You've, gotta, you've got to wear a McAfee jacket, all, which are all provided. But that's our culture. We're not, we're not going to do jeans and a shirt hanging out. I've seen a company, one of our competitors the other day did a TV commercial. And they've got this guy... Uh, pulling a air conditioner with a two wheeler, he's got dirty jeans on and and a button down shirt, un untucked, and I mean re- I I guess I'm so glad they're so unprofessional, and they're a pretty good sized company too. But that's not the McAfee way, never ever ever. Okay, um, so number one, you got to define your culture. Number two, you got to hire people who fit your culture. Boy, this is important. This is important. We sometimes we just hire people because it's a body. And we need bodies. I really hate that term. We need qualified people. Uh, I, I don't I don't just need a body. I need a qualified person who's going to be extremely professional and fit our culture. And they have to have the potential. They have to get along with people. They actually have to look the part, okay? And we can go on on and on on this because there are some companies. There are some. I've met some companies that said no facial hair. That's fine. That's your culture. Um, I couldn't work there. If 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 uh, I couldn't work here, if that was our rules, I mean, I wouldn't. I'm only going to do what I say, and I only expect you to do what I do. So you know, I couldn't work there. Um, and but that's fine. That's their culture. Um, so there's different there's many different kinds of cultures. There's people that allow pierced piercings. Uh, we don't allow piercings for anyone in the field. You have to take it out while you're at work. Um, we have certain rules inside as well. The office there's a whole there's a whole page on how to dress um, as a male as a female. Um, we have we have loosened up a little bit because tattoos are so darn uh, popular that as long as the tattoo is not offensive, um, we can we can have we can show tattoos on our arms. Um, when it gets to the neck and stuff like that, um, that's a different story, and that's just the McAfee way. That's that's our culture. Um, I have friends, and a, I actually have a business coach. Um, uh, John's probably listening to this. I mean, John is um, all pretty tatted up, pretty tatted up, and he's got some cool tattoos, and that works great for John and John's company. Um, but it may not work for yours, and uh, you have to define your culture. You have to stand for what you want to stand for. Um, John runs a tight ship, so John has other 
John's culture has other expectations that your company may not have. And uh, so you have to hire people who fit your culture. You know, I can go on and on, but are they are they well spoken? Are do they have good hygiene? Um, do they know what they say they know? Will they pass a drug test? Very important at McAfee. You better pass a drug test, and we're going to do random drug tests. And you better have a a good driving record because you may have to drive our trucks, and your the expectation is to have a good driving record. So hire people those who, who hire those who fit your culture. Very important. Number three, encourage your team to get to know each other. And you do that. You do that as an owner. Um, you you have you uh, first of all the the each each department should get to know each other. Um, but sometimes we'll have a company meeting and we'll just play a game. Where you um, will have um, an office person get with an installer, and they sit together for ten minutes, and there's a set of questions. You know, tell us a little bit about yourself. There's questions, and then you know, tell us something that nobody here knows, and that's always fun. Um, but we get to know each other in different departments. Um, we have company picnics. Uh, we have um, we have a chili cook-off. Um, we have other things where we bring in meals and then uh, we take them out to the field personnel. So we have a lot of things going on to get to know each other. We celebrate victories together. That's, I mean, part of our culture is winning. I've already talked about that. Talked about that a week ago. Um, we want to win. We're on a winning team and we like to win. And uh, so part of our culture is to be extremely competitive and win. And we have all kinds of contests. Uh, to do such as that. So um, we want a unified team. Uh, the stronger we are, the more we know each other and the more um, we learn about each other, the more unified we are. And um, it really helps it really helps uh, build a strong team. We like to celebrate successes as well. Um, I think I I seen something the other day. It was on, uh, you know, my uh, my Facebook page for small business is um, uh, Iron Sharpens Iron Business Roundtable. So if you're not if you're not on that, it's Iron on Facebook. Um, iron Sharpens Iron Business Roundtable, and we talk just you know strictly about business for business owners or or uh, head managers, key personnel. And, uh, but I was listening to, um, or I'm sorry, I was, wa- I was reading something the other day in another uh, business forum, and they said, how do you, um, what kind of bell do you guys have uh, when someone sells something? And I'm getting a call, and we've got a new system here. Um, it's ringing into my headphones. And I guess I could have just let it ring, and you guys would have never known. But um, since I'm real, I'm just sharing. So, um, so we had a, we have all kinds of different bells we ring in the office when somebody sells something. We celebrate. We send out a text. Um, I'm I'm on the text with my sales team. Anytime they sell anything, we've got different codes we use. But we're celebrating sales. I mean, that's part of the McAfee way. That's part of the culture. Um, you know, is to make things happen and and sell. So uh, it unifies the team and it makes it stronger. It seems to have worked well for us. I don't share anything that, that doesn't work, although when I do coach people, I let them know, here's what we did here, and it didn't work well. might work for you, but here's what happened to us. Okay, um, number four, just great communication. Um, one, one, if, you, if you work here at McAfee, you will hear that informed people make better decisions. And I say it often. Because that's communication. When you're communicating well um, with people and letting them know what's going on and all that kind of stuff, you're going to have a much stronger company. So there was uh, there's a there's a report out called the Holmes Report, and they actually said that the cost of poor uh, communication can cost up to um, thousands of dollars per worker. Okay, and um, 
that's a lot. That's just a lot of money in your company when you're not communicating well. People have to figure out what to do on their own. And then that's a whole other story. Um, it's like hiring. When you don't hire the right person, you're allowing them to, them to come into your company and do what they did at their old company. And maybe the old company wasn't that great. So that's why training is so important and communi- communicating to the employee what your expectations are. You can call them rules. We prefer to call them expectations. So avoid costly misunderstandings and stay in touch with your team. Communicate well. Set the expectations. We have the McAfee Handbook, and um, I'm actually due to record the new handbook. I've got to sit here and go through that entire handbook and read it. Um, I don't have to. I actually enjoy it. Um, And then we're going to show some pictures and stuff like that. But that handbook is the expectation of the McAfee culture because it's fully loaded it, it, it's the McAfee Bible. It's fully loaded with what we do and how we do it and what you're expected to do. Um, that's culture, folks. And uh, if an employee is struggling, um, you need to communicate openly with them. Um, you know, the owner, you're, not, you're never too big to talk to employees. You're never too big to learn more about one of your employees. Um, <clears throat> I know... Um, Ray Isaac owns Isaac Heating and Air, and uh, I think I mean I I'll get this wrong, but they have they basically have hundreds of employees, um, and he has learned um, all their names, and uh, and and that's just something that's very important to, to their culture at Isaac, and uh, so we have to trust we have to trust our team, we have to communicate with them. The more you get to know them, the more you trust them. And uh, so communication is really the, the, one of the major keys to success um, within a small business. Um, number five, and, and, and lastly, number five, is to promote growth. Hmm, new concept. <laughs> new concept for some people. Um, we, we promote growth. Anytime you're on a winning team, you're going to promote growth. Um, I told you what Steve Jobs said last week. We hire smart people not to tell what to do, for, but for them to tell us what to do. And if you hire talent, um, your, co- your company will just continue to be stronger and grow um, be- because of hiring good talent. When you hire just bodies, don't be disappointed. You're just going to get a body. You're just going to get... Um, something, uh, someone that, um, can't think for themselves. And I, and I hire thinkers. I, I need people to think if someone has to remind them all the time, uh, someone's not needed. So we hire thinkers, promote growth. Um, you know, with a, with a sense of, uh, safety in your office. Um, I've actually, I've actually put ads in the paper, especially for office employees that, we provide a, a calm atmosphere. Now, it can be hectic, it can be extremely busy, and we have a very high sense of urgency. But you won't hear any yelling, you won't hear any cussing, you won't hear any crap. We, you, actually, we avoid drama. Um, so we take care of the customer, we take care of each other, and we, and we keep plugging along and moving along. So... A sense of safety in your office increases the comfort level. And for a lot of you listening, you're in the comfort business if you're in heating and air. (coughs) Excuse me. Um, And just be real. By the way, when when all this has to do, your culture, if, if if you're fakey and you don't tell the truth, your team knows that. They can't trust you. What what kind of what kind of company is it? I mean, who wants to come into a company like that? You know, I want people to be able to trust me. I do what I say I'm going to do when I say I'm going to do it. And if for any reason that doesn't happen, you can call me out on it. Because it happens. I mean, that's just what that's what we do. And that's who we are. That's part of our culture. It's very important. Um, and we, you know, training is promoting growth is all about training. People today, this is 2021. People today want to, are more likely to work for a company who spends time training them, even if they already know a lot when they when you bring them on board. 
They want to know more about you. They want to know more about your company. They, they want to know about your expectations. See, people thrive with good expectations. They thrive under that. The kind of people you want thrive under that. If, if they don't thrive under the expectations of growing and, and, and communicating, then you hired wrong. Get rid of them fast because they're probably not going to work and they're going to drain you of a lot of money before you figure it out. So promoting growth, that's where, that's where the, you know, when you start building a confident team and they trust you and they're growing with your company and they're not afraid to come up with ideas and share them. Uh, we, we, we constantly uh, promote sharing ideas. Send in your ideas Talk to me, text me, email me, send me your ideas. How can we improve? Um, we, have, we, have, we have a handful of people that enjoy coming up with new ideas. And, and a lot of them we've taken and run with. They've been great ideas. Um, but you need to be you. You need to be who you are. I visited a company. I was in a mixed group, and I visited a company, and when I got there, all the, all the office staff was, were dressed extremely nice. I'm talking dresses, high heels, extremely nice. And finally, being, being who I am, I, I pulled one off to the side and I said, do you guys dress like this every day? And she said, no, this was just for you guys. See, that's not real. When you come in, I've, uh, several of you um, that may be listening have, have visited McAfee. When you come in here, we don't change one thing for you. We don't clean for you. We don't, we don't dress any different for you, and we don't talk any different for you. This is who we are, and this is what we do. And it makes us real. And our team likes real. They don't like fake. They see right through you when you're fake. We, we keep our offices and warehouses and trucks extremely clean all the time. We're not doing it for you. We're doing it for us. There's many reasons why we do it. But we appreciate you coming here, and we appreciate the compliments you give us because it's so darn clean in here and, and, and neat and organized and structured. It's on purpose. We work hard for that. But that's our culture. Again, figure out what your culture is, and then drive it home hard. Drive it home. It's... Um, the more you buy into it and the more you believe in believe it as an owner, believe in it as an owner, the more they're going to believe in it. And that's what it's all about. It's sharing. It's sharing the culture and getting them to buy into it. Because I'll say this before we close. There are a lot of people that maybe not maybe not everything we do they they agree with at first, because they're not used to it. It's new. Nobody likes change, right? But the more they do it, the more they like it. And now people will tell you here, we, we just we couldn't work for a company that doesn't do this, 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 or this, who doesn't expect this, 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 or this. It would be hard to change now because they they buy into it, they believe in it, and it works. And it's all about promoting a good atmosphere to work in. And that's what we do. And that's our culture. So I hope this helps. Have a great day. And I'll see you next week.